Hey guys, Eric Rodebois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. I'm gonna do a five minute video here. And what I wanna talk about is a real life story as usual and a couple of lessons we can learn from it, okay guys? So first of all, here's the story. We have a guy that it gets into uh, what, we, what we call a small claims dispute. So in the law, in courts, we've got what's called jurisdictional limits. So we've got zero to 8,000 in Florida is small claims. 8,000 to 30,000 is county court and then 30,000 plus is circuit court. Now there's a couple different things. If you ask for an injunction, or if you ask for something other than money, it usually has to be in circuit court. But basically when we're evaluating a case, we're looking at, okay, which court is it gonna go into? And each court, although they generally have the same rules, have slightly different rules. So small claims is designed to be do it yourself. It's designed to be the type of place where, let's say you get into a dispute over two, three, four, five thousand $5,000, you know, if you go to a lawyer, the lawyer might ask for a $5,000 retainer. So that doesn't really make sense. So the judges know that you'll have a lot of pro se litigants. Pro se is Latin for do it yourself. And so you'll have a lot of people that are just representing themselves and going to court on their own. So this, uh, this client of mine, he gets into this dispute and he ends up calling or he ends up being in communication with a former person that worked at my firm. And the person tells him, listen, you don't need a lawyer. Let me just charge you a little bit of money and let me help you prepare your small claims case. Now, I'm gonna say this guys, the first problem there is that you don't need a lawyer is legal advice, right? That is legal advice. And so that is, if you're not a lawyer giving legal advice, we call that the unauthorized practice of law. So non-lawyers should not give legal advice. Now, as a lay person, as like just talking to a family member or a friend, sure, we all know enough to be dangerous. We can all go on the internet. We can all do our own research, but just be careful, right? Be careful when somebody's giving you advice. And more importantly, if you're paying for the advice. So here's a common mistake people make. They'll take legal advice from an accountant. Now, again, accountants are really smart. They've gone to a lot of school, but they really shouldn't be giving legal advice. Now, if it's just friendly advice, the type of things you would say to your neighbor over the hedges, fine. But if you're paying for it, that's probably unauthorized practice of law. All right. And so then what that does is it opens up that person to liability for giving bad advice. So anyways, the person decides to take them up on it. They pay a couple hundred bucks for them to help them prepare the small claims lawsuit. Again, preparing the complaint. That's probably law. So that's probably unauthorized practice of law. They then file their lawsuit. And there's an interesting little background fact pattern. The, uh, the, this case, the person was buying a home, they bought the home, and they found out after the fact that there was a construction in the backyard that should have had a permit, but didn't have a permit. And so the cities can be really strict about this. Now, here's an important thing, guys. We live in Florida. In Florida, we have hurricanes. Okay, so if a hurricane blows through and you've got some poorly constructed thing in your backyard, the fear and the reason why we need permits and the reason why the city cares is because that deck or that pergola or that fence or that whatever could blow away and then cause damage to your property or other people's property. And so the state of Florida doesn't want your deck to get ripped off because it was poorly anchored to the ground because you didn't get a permit and there was nobody there to make sure you did a good job. So when I built a deck in my backyard, I had to get an architect and I had to pull permits and it took a couple months. And yes, that's frustrating, but guess what? Now all my neighbors can sleep sound at night knowing that my deck's not gonna get ripped off in a hurricane. Okay, great. So anyways, so this guy, sues the seller of the house and says, hey, you should have known that that thing in my backyard should have had a permit. And the seller says, well, I didn't know. And that's their defense, right? That's the defendant's defense. Well, in point of fact, there was an email from a contractor. So my guy ended up contacting the contractor who built it and the contractor responds in an email and says, oh, I told them they needed a permit and they said they didn't care. Okay, so that's directly contradicting what the guy said in his defense. His defense is, I didn't know, but we've got a witness who can testify that that's a lie. Okay, and so again, my guy is operating without a lawyer. Nobody's helping him. So he shows up to his court pro se. Both sides are pro se. Nobody got a lawyer and they have a trial in front of a judge. And so my guy is questioning the defendant. And he says to him, did you know that you needed a permit? And the guy says, no, I didn't know I needed a permit. Well, my guy then pulls out an email that says, look here, it says you need a permit. 
And uh, it says, it, you acknowledged that you knew you needed a permit. And the judge said, I'm not letting that into evidence because it is hearsay. Okay. Now all of a sudden you're realizing, okay, wait a minute, maybe I should have gotten a lawyer. What is evidence? What is hearsay? Okay. So the basic definition of hearsay is exactly this example. Somebody who's not in the courtroom, the contractor says in an email communication, what somebody else told him. So somebody who's not in the room is saying what somebody else said. And that's hearsay in the law. And in the law, we don't allow hearsay because that guy could have been lying. And we don't have an opportunity since he's not here to ask him other questions. We can't cross-examine him. Okay. And so my guy, again, doing his Google internet lawyering says, well, hold on your honor. There's an exception to the hearsay rule for business records. So now we've got a debate. Is an email from the contractor to this random guy who's saying, hey, why wasn't there a permit on this thing that you built five years ago? Is that a business record? And I'm gonna tell you as a lawyer who's been to law school, no, I don't think it is. I don't think that qualifies as a business record kept in the ordinary course of business that would be an exception to the hearsay rule because that's the point. The hearsay rule is very complicated and there are a series of exceptions, ways where you can say, hey, I can get this out of court statement into evidence anyways, because here's the exception, Your Honor. Uh, and there's a whole list of exceptions and we can do an entire, you know, it, it was an entire class in law school about the hearsay exceptions. It took four months to try and learn them all. And, and even then that was one of the hardest exams I took. So again, now my guy's in court and the judge says, no, that's hearsay, I'm not letting it in. Therefore, I'm gonna believe the defendant, you lose. And that's a true story, that's what actually happened. So now my guy's all upset and he's trying to figure out and I say to him, well, listen, we might be able to file a hearing, a motion for a rehearing. And if we can convince the judge that you should have another bite at the apple, then we would come in and represent you and do it the right way. Maybe we would, we would subpoena that contractor, see if he could get him into the courtroom himself and have the contractor say on the stand, yes, I was emailing with that dude and I told him he needed a permit and he didn't get one. Okay, that's probably the way we should have done it, right? But now it's after the fact. And he says, okay, well, what's the budget for that? And I said, honestly, the budget is between five and $10,000. He goes, well, that's not worth it. I'm suing for less than that. And I said, exactly. So guys, honestly, unauthorized practice of law, taking advice, doing things on your own. There's a lot to unwrap here. So please, if you have any questions, at the very least, call a licensed attorney. You can call me. Thanks, guys.